In this video I'm going to show you how to conduct a factor analysis on a correlation matrix and in this case the correlations correspond to the uh, estimations of the associations between the factors when they're rotated. You might recall in the factor analysis of the intelligence data the rotated solutions produced correlations between memory span, processing speed, and fluid intelligence. And in this case here I have the correlations imputed into SPSS uh, in a correlation matrix. So it's a square correlation matrix like this and it's really important to get all the elements of the correlation matrix in the data file exactly right. So row type underscore var name underscore and then you put your sample size means standard deviations 0 1. If you don't know what the means and standard deviations are just put 0 for the mean and the standard deviation 1 for all the variables, that's fine, it won't change anything. Uh, and the sample size here is 200. I only named them factor 1, factor 2, factor 3, but they could have been named uh, GSM, GS, GF, depending on the solution that you happen to be looking at uh, in terms of rotation because it'll produce different named factors uh, as factor 1, 2, or 3. It can change. The point I'm making here is that with this type of input in SPSS, you can then conduct a factor analysis on the correlations. So I've taken these from the pattern matrix, but you could see a correlation matrix published in somebody else's paper and then input those correlations. And it could not be from factor dimensions. It's just correlations between variables that uh, are published in a paper and input them into an SPSS data file like this. I'm going to put a link to this SPSS data file so you don't have to create it yourself because it's so finicky to get everything exactly right in terms of how the words are spelt uh, and those sorts of things. I'm going to put a link so you can download it and use it as your template and then if you want to add more variables you can. It can be as large as you want it to be but then you'll have to keep adding the word core 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 and a variable name here and then you need variable names this way. This is just three variables. So getting all this input correct with the correlations both below the diagonal and above the diagonal so 0.44 and 0.44, 0 0.587, 0 0.587, 0 0.538, 0 0.538 and if you recall from the textbook this was one of the correlations uh, between the factors for I think maximum likelihood and direct oblomin rotation. I think that's what it was. Uh, and in order to conduct the factor analysis you need syntax. SPSS won't work to my knowledge by just running it through the graphical user interface. Instead what you need is the syntax and the key variable here is matrix equal in core equals uh, star. I will put this syntax in the description of the video so that you can just copy and paste it. Really you can do other types of analyses and it will add more commands here. The key thing that you need is this part here, factor and then this line that tells it it's a correlation matrix that it's analyzing and these are the variable names here. So variables factor 1, 2, and 3. So if I actually went into the correlation matrix and I tried to do a factor analysis here it could it would say look you got three variables and let's just say I want to extract maximum likelihood and I want to extract one factor and I'm not going to rotate because it's just one factor it's not possible but I might want to sort by size and then continue and then click paste this is the important bit you'd click paste and that will produce the syntax that's associated with that analysis. But this won't work on a correlation matrix as input. You need to have this command here before the variable names to work. So again, I'm going to just include that syntax in the description and then you can copy and paste it and then you can change things as you see fit, but you can't change this part here. That has to stay the same. So let's run this analysis. And it's running the factor analysis, just one uh, variable. 
one, I should say, one factor that I'm trying to extract from three variables. So here are the communalities associated with the factors. So they're all producing in excess of 30% of their variance to the factor analysis. The factor accounts for 53% of the variance. Very impressive, quite a big factor. And that's typical. General factors of intelligence usually account for about 50% of the variance when the data are based on samples with a lot of variability. Now, if we look at the factors, we can see that factor three has a factor loading of 0.847. And factor three corresponded to uh, the, let's go back, factor three corresponded to fluid intelligence in the textbook, 0 0.91, 0 0.65, 0 0.55, visual puzzles, matrix reasoning, figure weights. So that is actually the most significant loading dimension on this general factor. And previous research has shown fluid intelligence to be the most significant indicator of general intelligence. And so this is why it's interesting to do a factor analysis on correlations between dimensions, because then you can look at a second order factor and it can help illuminate the nature of that factor. And in this case, fluid intelligence is the most significant in terms of numerical value indicator. And then the other two factors, one and two, which is uh, memory span and processing speed, they're about equally uh, sized factors. Uh, you could change the names in the correlation matrix to something more informative. It doesn't actually have to be factor one, factor two, factor three. Uh, so this you can change, uh, but the variable names and all this stuff here actually has to be the same. Uh, so this is an interesting way to carry on in a factor analysis. Very few people do this. Most people just stop at the first order factors and the correlations between them. Now you know how to do a second order factor analysis. The last thing I'm going to point out is, in theory, you could get your factor scores from a factor analysis and then run another factor analysis on the factor scores. Now, I can't remember exactly these factor scores, whether they were Promax rotation or uh, direct oblomen, I think these ones are Promax. So that's not going to be the same thing as what I just did. But the point is that you can do a dimension reduction and not need that correlation matrix output table and just do the core, just do the second order factor analysis on the factor scores and I want one factor because it's only three variables and then look at the results for that and then I get here uh, for this sort of analysis I actually get pretty different results I actually get uh, the GF latent GF factors actually uh, the lowest loading but they are you know similarly sized uh, but they are similar now based on the research I did the closest correspondence to doing a second order factor analysis uh, is actually when you do it based on the correlations of the rotated solution. Uh, but there's no definitive answer to this. But I would say typically what you should do is you would do the factor analysis, you would choose the rotation method, and then you would input the correlations in the rotated correlation uh, matrix, not factor analyze the factor scores. But I showed you to, that you can actually do it.